Welcome back. Today we are talking about spring break and then of course how you can protect your finances though if you're planning on traveling. Joining us today is David Glaude, the Vice President of Information of Security at Mountain America Credit Union. Thank you for joining us, David. So let's chat about this. People, I mean a lot of people itching to get out for spring break, but are we thinking about how to protect our finances and our wallets at this time? Tell us what we need to hear about. Yeah, that. you know, I'm excited about spring break too. I think right. a lot of people are. And, and the last thing I want to worry about is my finances. So I want to share a couple of things that people can do beforehand to be able to protect themselves so they don't have to worry about those okay. things. One of the things I often say is when we consider our phone, our phone has so much financial mm -hmm. data on there. And it's easy to think about if we treat our phone like cash. So what are some of the things we would do with cash? Well, first of all, we'd want to restrict who has access to it. Make sure that other people aren't getting access to our cash. And one of the things we can do with our phone is to have a strong pin uh, on there, preferably six digits, um, or even better than that is to have biometrics on there. So that way, if someone does get a hold of your phone, they're not able to look in it and look at your financial information. The other thing about your phone is, um, it just like cash, is we don't want to leave it sitting around. So I know it's tempting when we're sitting in the airport, we want to top off our battery, we've got it charging, and then we turn to, to uh, Netflix and we're watching a movie, but we're not paying attention to our phone. So always, just like we wouldn't leave our phone, our cash sitting around, right. uh, watch our phone just in that same way. Okay, that is such a good visual and also brings the importance to your phone really quickly. Mm -hmm. Think that's your cash, what do you do? That you aren't gonna just lay it around right. and leave it out. So mm -hmm. yes, very good, thank mm -hmm. you for that. So tell us then, things to look out for. Let's say something did happen mm -hmm. to within your finances. What are the flags that people can look out for? You know, a lot of financial institutions will have an entire fraud team that will be out there looking for red flags on your transactions on there. Uh, and one of the more common ones to look for is transactions that occur outside of your normal geographic area. Yes. And of course, when you're traveling, those are those things that are going to happen. And you don't want to be caught in a situation where all of a sudden your credit card doesn't work because there's suspected fraud. So one of the things we always recommend is that our uh, members set up what's called a travel notification. A travel notification is when you go and let your financial institution know when and where you'll be traveling. So that way if they do see those transactions, they aren't um, flagged as fraud and you're still able to go and buy some uh, gifts for your friends to, uh, to bring back home and your credit cards work while you're on the trip. Exactly. And I head into the store and all of a sudden it's mm -hmm. giving an alert and you can't have access to exactly. your own funds. Very smart to give mm -hmm. that call that would make a big difference. Tell us then, people traveling across the country or outside of the country, are there any different tips that they need to be aware of? Sure, sure. So when you're uh, far away, one of the last things you want to have is not have access to your credit cards or your phones. So one of the things I always recommend is people bring two credit cards oh. and they store them in different locations. So maybe one's in your wallet and maybe one you store in your backpack. In case one of them gets lost, you'll have a second one as a backup. Now, if that does get back lost, I always tell individuals, only call the phone number that's on the back of your credit card, mm -hmm. the 800 number. Well, if it's lost, you don't you have don't that have credit it. card to look up. So I let, let tell individuals, write down those phone numbers. Keep them in a separate location. Because the last thing you want to do is when you're lost and, and things are not going right. well, is to have to figure out how to call your financial institution. Such useful tips. Thank mm -hmm. you sincerely. I hope all of us are a little bit smarter mm -hmm. this spring break during <laughs> all of our travels. And again, we appreciate your time today, you David. Again, we'll send it over to you, Alana.